Hi guys, welcome back to Conservation Corner. I'm Travis Schaefer. And I'm Brian Parker. And we'll be looking at another way to get involved in the natural resources that Lee Summit Parks and Recreation has to offer. Today's activity is going to be involving urban foraging, specifically for morel mushrooms. So all we need for that is a field identification guide, a stick for poking around in the ground, a knife to cut the morels off, a mesh bag to put them in, and some bug spray to stay safe and away from the bugs. So for that, let's just head out to Winterset Nature Park area and let's get started. We went ahead and compiled just a list of commonly asked questions whenever it comes to urban foraging and, and some particulars on morel mushroom hunting. So, Brian, what is urban foraging exactly? Sure, yeah. So urban foraging is looking for edible plants around us. And for this instance, out in the parks, there are plenty of edible plants that can be prepared and put in many dishes or preserved. Okay, so for morels in particular, when and where should people actually go and look for those? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. And I'm sure many people are wondering when they should start looking for morels. So starting at the end of March, and then going into mid-May, it's a great time to look for morels all around us in the park systems. So on the south facing slopes in March would be a great place to start, places they see the most sunlight, and then going further into the woods, into denser vegetation, and then into the north facing slopes as we get closer to May, you will have your best luck in finding them. We talked about knowing where and when to look is important. The two biggest factors on if the mushrooms will grow will be the soil temperature being above 53 degrees. So some warmer days after some cooler nights, along with some precipitation to make change the humidity and moisture levels in the soil. Make sure to watch out for poison ivy. Great, now we know when to look. What kind of knowledge do we need going in? Well, so the first thing to consider is the equipment you're going to use. So anytime you're dealing with looking for mushrooms, foraging for mushrooms, you want to make sure you have a very accurate and up-to-date identification guide, field guide. Uh, Missouri Department of Conservation publishes one called Missouri's Wild Mushrooms. It's a great one. It has pictures, it has, has descriptions, it has a lot of scientific information as to where to find them, when to find them, all that beyond just morels. Um, Another thing you want to want to consider bringing with you is a stick of some sort, just to make it a little bit easier as you're going through tall grasses and stuff, move them aside so you don't step on and crush those morels. Um, you're going to also want a knife for whenever you find the morels. Um, best practice I find is just to cut them off at the base. The main thing that does is just keep the dirt and stuff from getting into the morels because they're pretty porous and they're harder to wash if you don't do that. Um, but one of the main things I tell people, the absolute main thing you need to bring is a mesh bag to put your morels in. And the reason for that is because morels, just like any other mushroom, have spores on them. So as you're walking along and you find morels and you pick them up and agitate them, spores are going to start dropping. And what those spores do is get on the ground and, and start some new mycelium or like root systems for mushrooms is what that is. And if you put them in like a plastic bag or something that doesn't have holes in it to let those spores continue to drop, you're really reducing your chances of finding morels there in the future. Hey Travis, did you know that the largest state mushroom morel holder right now has was 12 inches tall and 13 inches at the diameter? That's a big morel. What other mushrooms should we be looking out for in this? Well, there are a lot of different mushroom species that'll be popping up this time of year. But honestly, the main thing is you want to make sure that, again, you have that field guide with you, whether it's the book or iNaturalist app or something like that, where you can verify that it's actually morel. Because there are two very common mushrooms that come up that look like morels, but aren't. One's called the false morel. It's red in color and has a little bit different texture to it. And one's called a half cap. And if you do find those and pick those and eat those, it can cause, in some cases, a little bit of stomach illness and stuff like that. 
Um, in general, anytime you're foraging for any mushrooms, it's you've got to have a field guide with you, no matter how seasoned you are. Because. All right, guys. So today we learned about the importance of a mesh bag when it comes to morel foraging, why we want to cut the morels off at the base and the importance of identifying those morels since there's those false morels out there. Once you get your morels, there's going to be a couple options where you can either prepare them right away in like a stir fry, a stew, or batter and fry them. Or you can also preserve them. The best way to do so is just by dehydrating them. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can always just use your home oven. Just put it on the lowest setting, crack the door, put them on a little wire rack in there and let them go until they're nice and dry and those will keep for you. So I hope this becomes a new way for you guys to enjoy our park system and we hope to see you out in the park soon.